part of the Centre Court Masters Festival looks at the tremendous range of programme options and how those options have continued to grow and develop uh, in recent years. You know, we look at the Masters in Management, Masters in Finance, Masters in Accounting, at the Simon School uh, at the University of Rochester, Rochester, they have a master's in marketing analytics. But today we're gonna focus on really one of the hot degrees uh, of recent years, the uh, Masters in Business Analytics, a program that's really taken off. And I'm delighted to welcome uh, Rebecca Lewin. Uh, Rebecca is Senior Assist Assistant Dean of Admissions and Programs at the Simon School. And from the class of 2020, uh, uh, Plen Stelis, uh, who um, completed his program and secured a great position at EY as a tech consultant. Thanks both of you for joining us at, uh, at the Centre Court Masters Festival. Rebecca, if I can start with you, you know, here we have um, this, this dynamic program that's grown beyond uh, expectations as, as you described. It's more than just crunching numbers. It's applying all of that analytical thinking to the real world. Tell us a little bit about where it fits already into everything that you offer at the Simon School and, um, and, and why you think it's proving uh, to be such a popular program. Absolutely, so thank you for having us today, Matt. It's great to have a chance to talk a little bit about, like you said, one of our hot and growing programs. Um, the University of Rochester, more specifically the Simon Business School has been known for a very um, you know, considerable period of time as having a very quantitative and analytic curriculum. And so when we started talking uh, several years back about uh, where there might be uh, opportunity, not just on the prospective student side for um, you know, introducing a new program, but more importantly on the, the recruiter side, companies that might be hiring our students, business analytics became a focus. And so um, it fits in very nicely. All of our full-time programs are STEM designated and including this one and We've um, had the majority of our focus in terms of our en student enrollments in the graduate space. And so um, adding a specialized master's in uh, business analytics fits well there. It fits and connects with some of the company relationships that we had already established over a number of years. And again, it fits with where the market is headed in terms of um, employment opportunities uh, for students. So many companies, whether it's a big company or a small company, public or private, they're using data to make decisions. It's not just crunching numbers, it's trying to connect the insights into decision-making and, and kind of understanding how do you use the data that you have? And so our full-time master's in business analytics program fits in very well there. Now, Rochester is, is one of the most affordable places to live in the country. It's got one of the highest qualities of life. It's all, all, also, also in the top 20, I think, in terms of being one of the most uh, innovative cities in the US. Uh, and I suppose that's reflected with that analytical mindset that you were describing, uh, Rebecca, you know, taking big data into fresh in insights. In terms of the program itself, um, who typically applies uh, for a master's in business analytics? You know, how long does it take to complete as you're thinking about the next steps in your personal and professional development? Sure. Well, like many of the specialized master's programs that, that we offer, um, it's geared toward what we would consider to be either a pre-experience or early experience candidate, someone who might be coming either directly from their bachelor's degree or maybe with a year or two or three of work experience and, and looking to either continue to build technical skills that they may have started um, to develop at the undergraduate level or in their first job, um, or perhaps in some cases, maybe they have the potential in terms of quantitative and analytic abilities, but the major that they chose in college didn't allow them to fully develop those skills to launch into uh, the area of business analytics. And so um, we've had the program for about seven years now, and um, it's very much geared, like I said, for these early career candidates. I think another important thing to note is that we don't require that someone come in and have a computer science degree um, or even an undergraduate degree in business. I think if someone's had um, some exposure to courses in uh, business and um, some computer programming background that can be helpful. Um, but we see more and more students that might attend a liberal arts school. And so um, the uh, range of courses that they've taken in undergraduate may not be as focused. And so the master's degree allows for a greater level of focus um, while realizing, again, you're not going to leap 
um, this role and become a data scientist or a computer programmer, you need to understand some of the technical skills, but you're trying to be that connection point between you know, the business side and the technical side with the kind of work you're doing. So there's other fundamental um, you know, business related courses that you actually take as part of this curriculum. So, so around 150 in the class, and, and I have to note that on International Women's Day, you have such a strong gender balance. So, you know, both talented young men, men and women uh, that see this opportunity, perhaps it's a chance for me to bring in Guy, because Guy, you had studied, uh, I guess, business at undergrad, but you also had a bachelor's in psychology. Um, did you code before you came into the program or was Python just something that you'd find at a zoo? Yeah, so definitely I didn't have such a strong background in the technical side as a lot of my other, you know, classmates. Uh, just a little bit of like SPSS, a little bit of statistics, but not that strong of a technical background. But what I would say it's generally, this is exactly what Rebecca talked about. It is like this mix, right? You have people that start a program that they go all the way into become a data scientist or people that go into more of the business side. But this balance between the bus business skills and the technical skills, it's really what, what it's enlightening of the program, right? So you go a little, you, you dive deep into data structures, into predictive models, into causal. And that's definitely one of the sides that for me, it's super attractive, right? It's, it accepts both of the people, the people that have more of the technical skills and the people that have a little bit of more the social sciences like I did in psychology. Got it. Now here you have this great tech consultant role at one of the big four with, uh, with EY. But if we go back, uh, as you were thinking about, you know, returning to grad school, there, there are lots of options, you know, MBA, you could have done other uh, specialized master's programs. What was it that really attracted you to the uh, MSBA and how you thought that it would be able to advance your career? Yeah, so before I joined uh, Simon, I, I worked for a year actually in a construction management company. It has a very big presence on the, the East Coast of, of the US. And there I, I was basically the assistant of the president of the company. And I engaged in a lot of different projects in like data visualization, you know, a, a lot of data analysis, but mostly like Excel. So I realized that there was a huge potential for me to like improve these skills, you know, and I saw that a lot of my strengths were basically related to like building relationships with like the people that I worked for. But I, I realized that I, for me to go to the next level, I needed to improve my technical skills, get a little bit more ahead in that side. So. Right. <laughs> Rebecca, presumably, as applicants are looking at the di different options available uh, at the Simon School, how do you uh, advise them uh, you know, to consider um, the Masters in Business Analytics versus a more general business degree or other options that they could follow? Well, so it's interesting because I think for students that are looking for, um, you know, the option and flexibility to consider different industries, the business analytics degree can offer that. We have some students that go into financial services and the you know, business analytics role um, or the insurance sector and risk management, or you could find yourself in healthcare or consulting. And so um, for some students, they would like that flexibility in terms of where their career path might take them. Um, and the courses are taught in a way where um, you're understanding the frameworks, but not necessarily um, sending an immediate signal when you're going through the recruiting process as to where your career will, will necessarily take you. I think one of the other significant um, sorting mechanisms for how students choose a degree is their level of work experience. Um, and so I'll go back to that. Um, for the majority of our students that are in the MBA program, they do have a few more years of experience. The majority of our master's students have less. There might be a little bit of an overlap in terms of concentric circles of students that could kind of go one way or the other. And so in that case, we're talking about everything from, you know, how big of a career shift are you looking to make and the importance of an internship um, and, uh, you know, how much of the opportunity cost of how much time do you want to spend away from work, um, which of course the MBA will typically take you a little bit longer than a master's degree would. So um, those are a few of the factors that um, we choose this year. But I think the other big one um, is that, um, you know, a high proportion of the, the master's in business analytics degree is, is very technically focused. That's not all. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But 
Um, the majority of courses are very technically focused. And so again, for a student that wants to amplify and build those skills and that confidence, uh, specifically in uh, the, the programming languages and application and, and use of data and decision-making, um, this would be a great degree option for those students. And, and as you think about all those sectors, you know, from healthcare through tech, do you expect applicants, Rebecca, to, to have a sense of what they want to do next? Or does the program then allow them, uh, I think there are internship options that you have that extend beyond the two semesters of the, of the course, um, to, to get that sort of industry experience and then make their post-master's careers decisions? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. I think we want students to have some idea of what their interests are so that that can help us to confirm that they're making a good choice and that we can hopefully help to partner with them to meet their expectations in terms of their academic and their career goals. Um, but for many early career candidates, part of the decision-making process of choosing a career is having some experiences where you can either confirm or um, you know, decline what that experience is like as you prepare for uh, what that, you know, that future career path looks like. And so um, you mentioned the internship track. I think that's one of the key differentiating features that I, for our program and one that many of our students speak to, um, having that flexibility during their um, academic experience to, to take a break for a semester or for the summer typically and um, gain some additional important working experience with a company. It's building their resume. It's helping to define or refine their career interests and hopefully giving them things to speak to as they go through their, their future job search. Or in some cases, quite frankly, some companies are using that as an opportunity to consider a candidate for a full-time position after they graduate. And so um, for, for many of our early career students, that's just very, very valuable. What about for Yugi? You've gone from construction to tech. Uh, what, what were the key factors that led you to choose the Simon program? You know, it's course length. You've certainly developed a return on investment, but you know, what was going through your mind and said, no, this is the right program for me? Yeah, like as Rebecca has continuously mentioned, uh, Simon is extremely strong on the technical skills, right? I, I believe from the whole US, we are the first a program that has had all of the business uh, degrees STEM approved, right? So shows a little bit of that technical side. And so for me, it was really that, like I wanted to improve my technical skills. I wanted to be in a place that I would have that environment around me, right? Uh, coding, it's something that definitely, you can see a lot of resources available outside of even schools, but I believe being in a school, being in an environment where you can learn and being this journey with others was really what, what attracted me. You know, I made a lot of good friends and now all this, my good friends are in other amazing companies and doing some great work and being able to be part of like this collaborative environment and learn together, you know, all, all these skills is what, what was in for me. And, and, and did you do an internship during the program? Yeah, so I actually went from the other track. I got my job, my full-time offer before the end of the program. So I was able to, right after the end of the program, start my full-time job. But a lot of my other uh, colleagues, like they, they did the internship track and that was awesome for them. And even more, uh, being a, I'm from originally from Brazil and a lot of my other friends are from different international countries. So it's super beneficial to have a little bit of more time to get into the should the work right right and, and not underestimating the importance of that stem designation that the simon school was so uh, quick to achieve because of course that enables at least the three years beyond uh, your studies tell us about the learning experience uh, rebecca's talked about developing this analytical mindset and a very rigorous you know technically minded course what, what sort of classes are we looking at and, and how you know this emphasis on yeah, all of that classroom learning, but that you can then apply in the real world. Yeah, and I think the experience that I'm having right now, it really proves how the program, you know, prepares you to be successful because you can go into a lot of different areas, right? So within UI, we have definitely, right, we, we have insurance, we have tax, we have accounting, et cetera. I mean, consulting, but even within consulting, you have many different branches. And I was supposed to go to the data analytics uh, group before, but then with the shifting uh, because of COVID, right, in the demands, I actually went to technology enablement. So basically what we do, it's we help Fortune 500 companies 
to implement certain types of like software within their companies, right? So for example, the one that I'm working right now, it's Ser ServiceNow, the software. So we help companies implement it. And for that, it's not necessarily data analytics skills that you need, but you definitely need a very good understanding of like tables and columns and data structure, you know, just having a good understanding, for example, SQL, it's super needed. And the other side is like the operation side, right? It's, it's never only about the technology that you're implementing and, and the data that you have there, but like, how do you apply that to the company and you make it specific for, for their best practices, right? So it's this bridge between the technical skills that you need, right? To implement the software and the understanding of the data, but also understanding the processes from the business side. And right. definitely that's something that we did throughout the whole pro. Uh, program right one of the going back to your question around the, like a class that for me was super that was very good preparing myself was um, marketing analytics which before i think the name was causal and predictive analytics so that class we really dive deep into what, what i would say like the three areas of analytics which is the descriptive analytics right so just like giving back types of uh, the, the data insights right then the causal, establishing like a relationship between one variable and the other. And then the predictive side, which is, you know, you, you have all this data, how can I make the best guess of a certain other scenario? And all this teaches you so much in looking at use cases and how you can implement in other companies and, you know, in certain situations for certain processes. So you when you graduate, you never know exactly where you're going to end up. So just having that broad sense of, all the possibilities that are out there and how you can be successful with the, all the toolkit that you have from Simon, uh, that for me was amazing, right? Right. We talk about the increasing popularity and from, you know, seven years ago, those initial conversations, Rebecca, you were having with colleagues to, you know, where the program is today. But no wonder uh, this uh, Business Analytics Masters is, is so popular. I mean, you have what? a 95% uh, employment rate in the three months out of the program. Average mean salary uh, is close to $80,000. I mean, that must be part of uh, what's driving such demand, Rebecca. What, what, why do you think it's proving to be so popular? I do think that the, the career outcomes is a very big part of every conversation we have with a prospective student. And so for us as a school, making sure that we have the resources and support for students through our career management center, and that includes both dedicated full-time staff who are working with students in each of our specialized master's programs. And that team has grown over the past few years. We also use second year MBA students that help support our first year MBA students and our master's students. And they provide valuable insights about the job searching process and everything from advice if you're looking to get into a particular kind of company um, and the hiring process to actually working on, you know, kind of continuing to refine your resume and, and everything in between. Um, and then there's obviously an entire process of stewarding and managing the relationships that we have with companies to help maintain the career support for our students. I think one of the things we haven't talked about that I would also mention is that um, we put a heavy emphasis um, in our master's in business analytics program on communication skills. And so um, we have a required communications class that sometimes catches people off guard. They're like, wait, I thought I was coming to study business analytics. Um, and here's this communications class. But we've put a lot of attention into the course. And many of our students tell us that it was the most important class they took in the program, which um, really kind of speaks to not just the confidence that our students are gaining through the course, but um, how that has prepared them to meet or exceed the expectations of the companies where they're working. And we've also introduced both required projects for our students, but also some optional opportunities for um, pro bono consulting and case competitions and other very practical experiences that along with students that might choose to say the internship track, there's other ways as they're going through the program to build their skills, gain confidence, practice what they're learning uh, so that when they reach the point of interviewing uh, for job opportunities that they have some different stories that they can tell about those experiences that help to demonstrate to companies that they're ready to hit the ground running and they're going to be very successful in their roles. Guy, you graduated two years ago. Do you remember that communications class? And in fact, as, as you think about the experience, not just in the classroom, but being part of the Simon community, there's over 18,000 alums. Um, uh, so talk about perhaps the, the classes, but also you know, how you can really sort of benefit from the wider community of the school. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, going along with what Rebecca said, like professional communication, right? The class that we had and also communication skills in general, that's by far one of the most important skills that you need to be successful when, you know, when, when working and in your professional side. Because it, it doesn't matter if you get great results, if first going back to analytics, right? If you have the best prediction, nowhere, whatever, if you're not able to communicate that, right? And communicate to the client, that's just a black box that no one knows about it. So having that ability is super, super important. And at the end of the day, we are all human. We all get a little bit nervous, right? Myself, <laughs> I always get, you know, that cold, cold feeling in your stomach, but I think the more you practice, the more you go through experiences like that, the better you're gonna get at it, right? Uh, there are people that definitely, they, they, they feel a little bit more uh, comfortable in situations like that, but being able to practice that and also practice that in the field that you are studying and use have used cases of presentation in those senses, uh, it makes it way easier when you're gonna get the interview and not only in the interview, but when you are working and working with different clients, right? Because even more in consulting where I'm working right now, I, I would say we're mostly doing PowerPoint presentations and strategy and how we are going to convince the client of doing that. Right? And that's all communication. It's like showing that confidence. And going back to your, your other question around like the community and, and the alumni, and myself, like one of the reasons I, I was able to get my job was also because of our huge alumni outreach. I, I had a Sorry, I'm in New York, so. <laughs> but you are always able to, you know, build those types of relationships, you know, and they follow very naturally just by the fact that you have the degree in common and you have that passion in the same field. And when you're curious, when you have, you know, th that that need of learning and having the opportunity for nothing better than having those people that have gone through that, you know, help you on the way. And when they see that you have that potential, they want to help you, right? The same way that right now I'm in a position that I'm able to help a few other friends of mine and, you know, people that I connect to, so. Right, and, and, and so how that network can open doors, that, that sort of willingness to give back. Uh, Rebecca, for, for the viewers at, at Centre Court, getting to know more about the school, getting to know more about the programme, um, you know, what are the best way for our viewers to, to get in touch with you and find out more? So as an admissions team, we're actually very interested in talking to prospective students. Um, I know sometimes the tendency might be just to go see what you can learn on the website, which is wonderful. But we view that as a, a very first step of, of hopefully what will be quite a bit of um, interaction and engagement. Um, we have a number of students that reach out via email and we actually read and respond to every email um, and try to do so within a few days. So uh, that's a very timely way to connect with us. We also have webinars every single week and uh, it's on topics, everything wide ranging from application tips and admissions details to program-based information and uh, opportunities to connect with current students. And so that's another really valuable way if you're not ready to have an individual conversation where you can continue to learn more. Um, we also do have um, a unique opportunity that I feel like I should mention, um, considering the timing where um, this is our first year where we've launched a future business leaders case competition, which is an online case competition for prospective students. So you don't have to apply or be admitted yet to, to our business school, um, but it's specifically for early career candidates, candidates that are currently a senior in high school or maybe just starting their career. Um, and they're interested in having um, an opportunity to actually be kind of coached through a case competition. So we don't just um, leave you on your own. We actually give you some advice about what we're gonna be looking for. Um, and students are competing for some small cash prizes, which is always wonderful, but also for scholarship opportunities within the Simon program if they're interested in applying for 22 or 23 um, entry. And so um, if you're thinking seriously about uh, Simon, uh, that would be another excellent opportunity to connect and learn more. And uh, like I said, not only for the experience itself of, of uh, what a case competition is like, but also for some of the um, rewards and prizes that might be available as well. That's a fantastic initiative. Roll up your sleeves and, and really you know, get, get a sense of, of being a student at the school. Uh, Guy, perhaps to finish, two pieces of advice. The first piece of advice is to yourself. We go back to day one as you started the program. Uh, and, and, you know, everything that you want to accomplish in the coming year, you know, ad advice, maybe uh, 
prioritizing time management, fitting everything in. And then a second piece of advice for viewers who are considering maybe the Masters in Business Analytics alongside other uh, graduate business school uh, options. Um, so what would they be starting with? Advice that you would give yourself as you started the program, knowing what you now know. Yeah, uh, it's definitely an advice and I think it's something that, that I did a lot. I think there's always room for improvement, but I think there's some people that they get caught into just studying and just, you know, I, I'm going to go to this school and I'm just going to be studying and I'm going to know everything about this topic and I'm going to be there. Yes, that's definitely super important. I, I was there, I was studying a lot. I was always, you know, part of the library and part of my group studies, et cetera. But also like keep, keep yourself as an interesting person, right? Like practice those hobbies that are going to get yourself into like those cool conversations with people, you know, that it's going to light their eyes and you're going to have that in common like so you know practice your hobbies be curious about different things read you know so so get yourself out there don't be just in a library by yourself studying because that's very limiting right there's always people that know more there's always people that are going to point you into a new opportunity so i think that's super important and even more because at the end of the day uh, it's it's not a computer science specific degree. You're not only focusing on that. It's also a business degree. And in the business world, you, you need that. You need to build relationships. You need to engage with others. You need to be open. You need to learn how to listen. And, and that's just part of like human relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that for everyone that joins, be, be part of this community. And, and Simon offers that. Like we have a lot of different clubs. We have a lot of people from different countries. And you are in this constant like cultural and learning like exchange right and the second the second one is your tip about uh, someone that is joining correct mm. uh, right. your second question well, think, think, there, there are our viewers thinking well you know i want to go back to, to business school there are lots of great options at simon and and, and elsewhere um yeah. advice of finding the right program for you yeah, I, I will say that, and I can go back to a book that I, I read actually while, while I was finishing school and I thought it was, wow, this, I wish I could have read this later just to like, kind of like give myself evidence that I was doing the right choice. But the name is Range, Why Generalists Succeed in a Specialized World. And it's from a psychologist, I believe. His name is uh, Dave Dabstein. And he basically goes through all these, you know, theories and stories in, in the book about like, why more and more being very very highly specialized on a field is not it's not the best it's actually like knowing a little bit of everything right being a generalist so he goes back for example in the renaissance uh, da vinci was not only a painter he was an astronomer he was a mathematician he did many different things and what he did was like he cross used like this learnings from different domains and then applied something and innovated right and i would say that for me business analytics is exactly that it's a very specialized but generic degree, right? You learn how to code, but that's basically a language and you can do whatever you want with it, right? You can work in finance, you can work in operations, you can work in human resources, you can do anything you want. And I think more and more, we're gonna need types of degrees like that because people, it, it's already, there's a lot of research, right? That, Nowadays, more and more people switch careers three to four times as they grow older. So it's important to have that ability to be flexible and to adapt, right? And, and I think business analytics gives you that compared to other degrees. I think that uh, da, fin da Vinci's mastery of Latin was a, probably a lot stronger than mine. But if I'm correct, <laughs> the, the motto of the school is whatever better. Uh, and just, you know, your comments about co continually improving, investing in yourself, uh, and Rebecca, um, I'm sure that uh, you had people like uh, Guillermo in mind uh, when you started the program. Th thank you, both of you. You've given us a wonderful taste of, of the program, the school, its community, of course, the, the great career outcomes uh, that uh, Guy and others uh, are now enjoying. Um, I'm delighted that you're able to join us at the uh, Centre Court Masters Festival. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Matt.